The two examples we looked at were examples where you're given the triangle and just told to start solving for things. Uh, and a lot of the application problems, it's not going to be that simple. And so remember that the important things for a lot of these problems is to draw an accurate diagram and think through the words very carefully. Now I will say that these problems are right at the threshold of complexity for students where it's easy to get lost and it's easy to make mistakes and it's easy to, easy to mislabel things. And so when we go through these examples, I really want to encourage you to try to think it through for yourself before actually watching the examples being done. If you just sort of copy along with the examples, you're going to miss the thinking part that is uh, so important in understanding how to do these problems correctly. So after the problem is read, pause the video, try to work it out for yourself before watching the solution. It will really help you to understand things. Suppose a boat leaves port, travels 10 miles, turns 20 degrees, and travels another eight miles. How far from port is the boat? Again, take a moment, try to draw the picture before watching the rest of the video. All right, so when we set this one up, we need to be very careful that we read the problem correctly and that we think it through. So here we're gonna put port somewhere and it doesn't even say what direction we're heading. And so I'm just gonna move, pretend we're moving off to the right. We go in this direction for 10 miles and then we turn 20 degrees. So if we were facing this way, we turn 20 degrees, we'll now be going something like this. And then we travel that for eight miles, uh, eight miles, yes. And so the question is, how far are we from port? Now, the big mistake for this problem is that students will then label this angle here 20 degrees. But that's not 20 degrees. Just sort of intuitively, if you turn a small amount, 20 degrees isn't that much. If you turn a small amount, the, uh, the angle over here that's made by your path is going to be bigger than 90 degrees. And so labeling this as 20 degrees and just plugging, uh, just going ahead without thinking about it is a good way to make mistakes. And so what's really happening is that you're turning 20 degrees from here, from going straight ahead. And so this is the very common mistake that students make is that they don't think through the problem and they just start throwing labels down without being careful with it. <clears throat> All right, so what does this mean? So if this angle is 20 degrees and this is a straight line, what does it tell us about this angle? Well, the sum of these two angles is going to be 180 degrees. And so that means this angle is 160 degrees. And now we have enough information to start setting things up. We are interested in this distance. I'll call that distance C. Um, so C is opposite the 160 degree angle. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine. Um, Given a name, we've been calling uh, C opposite gamma, so we'll call it gamma. All right, well, let's see. We're trying to solve for gamma. Oh, no, sorry, we're trying to solve for C so we can plug in our values, including gamma. C squared is, um, doesn't really matter which way to do it, just for labeling. I'll call that one A, call that one B. So 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times cosine of 160 degrees. Plug that into the calculator. Well, 10 squared is 100, 8 squared is 64. Uh, that's going to be 160 times cosine of 160. So 164 minus 160 cosine of 160 degrees. That's our C squared. And now I plug into calculator 164 minus 160 times cosine of 160. C squared is equal to 314.3508. Now here I'm keeping four decimals. I'm going to have to take a square root. So I'm going to keep a couple extra digits over here to make my final answer a little bit more accurate. Square root of 314.3508, 17.73. So the boat is 17.73, in this case, miles from the starting position. So again, the big challenge here is the diagram. Labeling, labeling this angle as 20 degrees is not correct. 
you have to think through carefully. If you're going straight and then you turn by 20 degrees, the amount that you turn is the 20 degrees, not the angle in the triangle. Let's look at a, uh, another example. Example 9 is a good example of a real-life situation. Now, the problem with some of these word problems is that there are a lot of words, and sometimes students are quick to gloss over the words and not think about what any of it means. And in fact, in the book, they tend to just look at the picture and copy the picture without spending any time thinking about the words. And so it's really important, again, to think through the language and understand what's happening. Half of this problem is just explaining what's going on before setting up uh, the actual uh, calculation itself. And that's just to help you be a, well, a, a better informed person to understand how some of these things actually work in real life. So here we go. Example 9. On many cell phones with GPS, an approximate location can be given when the GPS signal is received. This is done by a process called triangulation, which works by using the distance between two known points. Suppose there are two cell phone towers within range of view, located 6,000 feet apart along a straight highway that runs east to west, and you know that you are north of the highway. Based on the signal delay, it can be determined that you are 5,050 feet from the first tower and 2,420 feet from the second. Determine your position north and east of the first tower and determine how far you are from the highway. Again, take a moment, draw, draw the picture, it, pause, pause the video and draw the picture. Okay, so what do we know? A lot of words here. We know that we are on a highway that runs east to west. Uh, so we have, so we draw a horizontal line like this. Um, we know that we are somewhere north of the highway. So I'm just going to put a little X up here somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where we are. We're just somewhere up there. And what do we know? Well, based on the signal delay, we know that we are 5,050 feet from one tower and 2,420 uh, 2, from the other. So from this, we'll call this tower one, call this one tower two. 5,050 feet from that tower and 2,420 feet from that tower. And we also know that these two towers are 6,000 feet apart along that uh, highway. What do they want to know? Based on the signal delay, whoops, sorry, determine your position north and east of the first tower so this is the first tower, so we're north and east of the first tower. Determine our position, um, north and east of the first tower, and determine how far we are from the highway. So we want to figure out this value, which is, I'm gonna label it as H because as, a, as it's drawn, it looks like the altitude, the height of the triangle. Uh, determine your position north and east, so we need to figure out how far this is, that's the eastwardly part, and then how far north of it we are. Okay, well, let's take a look. Well, I labeled this little angle here because this is the angle we're going to go after. Call that one alpha. When we look at the big triangle, it's not a right triangle, so we're going to have to use the law of cosines here. We have three sides, and we're missing the angle alpha. Uh, I'll go ahead and label this one. This is A. We'll call this one B and call this one C. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2A, whoops, sorry, 2 BC cosine alpha. I'm not going to do the whole calculation again. We've done it a few times. We can solve for cosine alpha to get B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And so again, let's plug in these values. Cosine alpha, our B squared is going to be 5050 squared plus 6000 squared minus 2420 squared, all divided by 2 times 5050 times 6,000. And just as before, I'm going to calculate the numerator and denominator separately. So 5050 squared plus 6,000 squared minus 2420 squared. It's a big number. 5564610 five, six, six, zero, zero, 2 times 5050 times 6,000 six zero six zero 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 
one, two, three, five zeros at the end. Okay. So five five six four six one zero zero divided by six zero six zero 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 zero. Zero point nine one eight three. And so we can plug this into, uh, I'm sorry, we can take the inverse cosine of this, inverse cosine of that value that we just got, 23.33 degrees. So that's this angle here, that angle is alpha, 23.33 degrees. So now I'm gonna draw just that triangle, that right triangle by itself. So 23.33 degrees, we have 50, 50, feet up here. This part right here is not 6,000 feet because 6,000 feet is the entire length. And so we have to figure out what this is. We'll call this one X and call that one H as I have it labeled over here. And now we go back to previous trigonometry stuff. So if we want to solve for X, we can use cosine, cosine of 23.33 degrees. Cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, X over 50, 50. So x is 50, 50 times cosine of 23.3 degrees. So x is equal to 50, 50 times cosine of 23.3, 4638.15, and that's in feet. And then the h value, uh, we can get that when using the sine function, sine of 23.33 degrees. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse h over 50 50 and so h is equal to 50 50 times sine of 23.33 degrees 50 50 times sine 23.33 is equal to 1999.93 feet basically 2000 feet and now we know how far to the east and how far to the north we are from the first cell tower. How far are we from the highway? Well, the distance from the highway is just the H part, and so that's this value right here. So again, the big, the, the hard part here is getting this picture set up correctly. Uh, the algebra hopefully is getting simpler as we've done more examples. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions about it, you can always send me a message.